The question is, will the House suspend the rules and pass the bill H.R. 701 as amended? Those in favor say aye. Those opposed, no. The Mr. Opinion Speaker, of the chair, Mr. Speaker on this, I demand the yeas and nays. The gentleman from Texas. Uh, Mr. Speaker, on this, I demand the yeas and nays. The yeas and nays are requested. All those in favor of taking this vote by the yeas and nays will rise and remain standing until counted. A sufficient number have risen. The yeas and nays are ordered pursuant to Clause 8 of Rule 20. Further proceedings of this motion will be postponed. For what purpose does the gentleman from North Carolina see recognition? Mr. Speaker, I move the House to suspend the rules and pass H.R. 384 as amended. The clerk will report the title of the bill. H.R. 384, a bill to establish the position of Special Assistant for Veterans Affairs in the Office of the Secretary of Housing and Urban Development by transferring the Special Assistant for Veterans Affairs to the Office of the Secretary of HUD and for other purposes. Pursuant to the rule, the gentleman from North Carolina, Mr. McHenry, and the gentleman from Texas, Mr. Green, each will control 20 minutes. The chair recognizes the gentleman from North Carolina. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I ask unanimous consent that all members have five legislative days within which to revise and extend their remarks and submit extraneous materials for the record on H.R. 384 as amended currently under consideration. Without objection, so ordered. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, today, I rise in support of H.R. 384, the Homes for Heroes Act of 2013. This bill, introduced by my colleague from Texas, Congressman Al Green, uh, who I have the pleasure of, uh, of having serve alongside of me as uh, ranking member of the Oversight Investigation Subcommittee on the Financial Services uh, Committee. Uh, this bill would establish the position of Special Assistant for Veterans Affairs within uh, Housing and Urban Development to coordinate services provided to homeless veterans and to serve as HUD's liaison to the Department of Veterans Affairs, the U.S. Interagency Council on Homelessness, state and local officials, and nonprofit service organizations. The position is currently in the Office of Deputy Assistant Secretary for Special Needs. This transfer highlights the importance of addressing the housing needs of our veterans. H.R. 384 would also require HUD to submit a comprehensive annual report to Congress on the housing needs of homeless veterans and the steps undertaken by HUD to meet those needs. H.R. 384 is a version in part of the Homes for Heroes Act of 2011, 2009, and 2008, all of which passed this House with well over 400 votes each. As our servicemen and women continue to serve our country, both here and abroad, the least we can do is ensure they have proper access uh, to the services uh, that are offered to them when they return. This bill represents a step in that direction, and I urge my colleagues to support this worthy endeavor. And with that, I reserve the balance of my time. The gentleman reserves the balance of his time from North Carolina. The gentleman from uh, Texas is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I yield myself such time as I may consume. Uh, Mr. Speaker. The gentleman is recognized. Thank you. I would like to start by thanking Mr. Henseling, the chairperson of the committee, he gave me his word. He said this bill would come to the floor, and he has kept his word. I'd like to thank the ranking member, Ms. Waters. She committed to help with this bill. In fact, the genesis of this was a conversation that I had with her, and she kept her word. I'd like to thank Mr. McHenry. Indeed, he and I do serve on oversight and investigations, and I appreciate very much uh, his being here today to help us uh, by managing this piece of legislation. Uh, I believe that he and I will accomplish additional things on a bipartisan basis. This is a bipartisan piece of legislation. I'd also like to thank the staff. While I will stand here and hopefully rise to the occasion, it really takes greater people to make the occasion. These people are the staffers that work long into the night on many occasions to try to reach a consensus on legislation. The staff really put a lot of time into this piece of legislation, Mr. Speaker, and I think they should be complimented. I especially would recognize one staffer in particular, Ms. Harmeet Kaur. This is her last week in our congressional office. She's a fellow, and I'm honored to say that she worked with us on this piece of legislation. Finally, I'd like to thank our veterans. Mr. Speaker, we stand here in the well of the House and enjoy many of the freedoms that we have because there are people 
who are willing to go to distant places, willing to risk their lives. Indeed, Mr. Speaker, many of them do not return the way they left. And I just believe, Mr. Speaker, that the least a grateful nation can do is make sure that when they return home, they return home to good jobs, the best health care, and good housing. I believe that it's almost sinful to see a veteran standing on the corner with a sign that reads, homeless, hungry. I believe that we ought to do everything within our power to help people who are willing to risk their lives for us. I had the good fortune or misfortune, I'm not sure which, to pass by a VA hospital with a sign out front that read, come in and see the price of freedom. Some things bear repeating. Come in and see the price of freedom. The price of freedom is quite high, Mr. Speaker. The price of freedom will cost some in the prime of their lives things that you and I can never replace. Money can't buy. And when money can't buy and you and I can't replace, the least we can do is all that we can. This is why we're asking that this special assistant be placed in the office of the Secretary of HUD, that this be codified into the law, that it is not going to be easy now for this person to be replaced or this position to be removed. And Mr. Speaker, I must say also that uh, HUD has been quite helpful. HUD has established a similar position in another part of the department. But this would place the person in the office with the secretary. And this person in the office of the secretary would try to help us with some of the statistics that we find abhorrent. We find that there are approximately 76 to 144,000 veterans that are homeless. This is unacceptable. We find that on any night in 2012, about 600 62,000, about 62,000 veterans were homeless. This is unacceptable. And what this assistant will do is work with the homeless veterans organizations, serve as a liaison person to the Department of Veteran Affairs, the U.S. Interagency Council on Homelessness, with state and local officials and not-for-profit organizations. This assistant will coordinate services with these various entities. Mr. Speaker, this is not enough, but it is a start. It is a continuation, if you will, of what we've been trying to accomplish. And Mr. Speaker, I beg that my colleagues, I would beseech them and implore them to please support this legislation because you're really supporting our veterans. I will reserve the balance of my time. This reserves the balance of his time. We have no more speakers, but I reserve. Joe from North Carolina reserves his time. Yes, sir. with this, Mr. Speaker, if I'm recognized, Jim I would say. Texas is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I will close. And in closing, I will remind us that the greatness of America is not going to be measured by how we treat people who live in the sweets of life. The greatness of America is often going to be judged by how we treat people who live in the streets of life. And too often we have people who have served their country living in the streets of life. They literally live on the streets. It is time for us, the richest country in the world, where one out of every 100 persons is a millionaire, to acknowledge what our veterans have done to make it possible for us to enjoy these great and noble American ideals uh, as extolled in the Pledge of Allegiance, liberty and justice for all, in the Constitution, uh, wherein we would have all people be treated, created and treated equally. And so, Mr. Speaker, I just beg in closing that we members ha take advantage of this opportunity to support our veterans. It is not something that is going to break the bank. In fact, it has a minimal impact on the deficit, but it can have a huge impact on our veterans. I thank you. I thank you, Mr. McHenry.
and I yield back the balance of my time. The gentleman yields back the balance of his time. The gentleman from Texas is recognized. Uh, gentleman from North Carolina. North Carolina. Uh, wishing to close, I uh, yep. recognize myself for such time as I may consume. Uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, I want to commend my uh, uh, colleagues to this bill. I would like to uh, congratulate my colleague, Mr. Green, on putting forward such a worthy proposal uh, that is both sensible and, at the same time, uh, deeply honors our most treasured uh, resource in this country, our returning veterans, to make sure they're well cared for. Uh, so I ask my colleagues to uh, support this measure. And with that, I yield back the balance of my time. The gentleman yields back. The question is, will the House suspend the rules and pass Bill H.R. 384 as amended? Those in favor say aye. Those opposed? In the opinion of the chair, two-thirds being in the affirmative, the rules are suspended. The bill is passed. And without Mr. objection. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, ask for the, the yeas and Carolina. nays. Ask for the yeas and nays. The yeas and nays are requested. All those in favor of taking this vote by the yeas and nays will rise and remain standing until counted. A sufficient number have risen. The yeas and nays are ordered. Pursuant to Clause 8 of Rule 20, further proceedings of this motion will be postponed.